Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, great. Uh, so yeah, uh, welcome. Thanks, uh, thanks for being here after the after the break now. And it's, it's a bit hot, and you know you're probably also still already a bit tired as I am. So great that you still came out to hear about our topic. And uh, today we're we're going to be talking uh, about map time, and we're going to uh, tell you a little tale about map time. And uh, a lot of people might not actually uh, know what map time is, but we'll get to that. And but before we do that, before we do that, um, let's just we want to introduce ourselves. Uh, so my name is Alcino. I'm from Berlin. I'm the organizer and uh, coordinator of uh, MapTime Berlin. Uh, I'm an interface designer. I deal a lot with data visualization, uh, geographic uh, data vis, and I work mostly freelance, but sometimes also for uh, data journalistic projects. Currently at Site Online. And uh, hi, uh, my name is Michele. Uh, I'm a spatial data scientist and PhD candidate at King's College London. Uh, and I'm the founder and former organizer of um, Metta Milano, which has now been taken over by uh, Stefano and Alessandro. Thank you, guys. And um, before we, you know, actually go into the details, uh, we would like to just explain a little bit uh, what MapTime actually is. So um, MapTime in itself is an open learning environment. It is actually a set of uh, regular uh, meetups that take place in a lot of different cities around the world where people can actually learn about maps and map making. Uh, it's not restricted to any type of technology or tools, but it's really like an open, open source and also open community. And it was uh, founded by uh, Beth Schechter um, in San Francisco, who was at the time working at uh, Stamen Design, which some of you might probably know. And um, if you're interested uh, to hear more about the general uh, history of uh, MapTime, you can go log onto the site and uh, maptime.io and uh, have a look at it and uh, yeah, find out more. So what makes uh, MapTime so special uh, you know, cons uh, with regards to other uh, meetups maybe and other geo groups? Um, so first of all, it's really uh, geared towards beginners. So it's really about uh, learning about how to make maps. Uh, you know, it could be a web map. It could uh, also be GIS tools, uh, anything really. Um, and uh, we really try to keep it as, as uh, well, the barrier to entry as low as possible. So we really uh, try, you know, someone doesn't need to be able to code or uh, be a programmer or have any technical background to come. So it's really, that's really the spirit. And also we try to be, you know, have playful projects. We show stuff, we do tutorials, which come in handy, but uh, uh, yeah, which are not necessarily technical. And uh, we also try to be very welcoming, like our uh, speakers, some uh, speakers from yesterday from Belgium, from the OSM community, was saying they were really trying to be welcoming, and I think we're trying to be the same and, uh, and emphasize this and not exclude anyone. Plus, we're really funky fresh. That is, uh, of course, true. Um, this is what uh, a typical map time session could look like. So a lot of people in a room with a lot of laptops. Um, and then Sebastian, actually, who's already also there, he's, uh, he, this uh, particular, uh, particular session he was giving a tutorial. Um, and then we're sitting there discussing, having tutorials, having, uh, uh, showing projects and so forth, and learning together. That's uh, the most important part. Uh, MapTime has evolved quite a lot, actually, over the recent years. So now we have 120 chapters worldwide, uh, of which, of course, not all of them are really active. But, uh, you know, you have quite a few, in, in mostly in the U.S., uh, and uh, some in Europe, and then all over uh, some other places as well. Um, and there's a lot of creativity also going on. So now, for example, here you see some, some of the different logos that people uh, have come up with. It's, you know, it's a, not, a, not a centralized organization where there's only one logo and then people have to follow something, but it's rather, uh, yeah, location-specific, and uh, people can, you know, be crazy and do whatever type of logo they want. So, uh, yeah, that's a lot of creativity there. And I'm just going to give you, you know, the first part of the story. So I'm going to tell you this, uh, the tale about uh, MapTime Berlin and how it all started. Um, so basically, it started all with me because I kind of uh, wanted to, to, to found this. And at, at that point, you know, back some, a few years back, um, I was really interested in uh, doing data visualization and maps and web maps. And uh, I want to be, you know, I, I was thinking, okay, what's the most basic thing I can do? And I saw web maps, and, but I wasn't able to do, to do web mapping. I didn't even know how to put a pin on a, on a, like a marker on a map. And I was like, okay, that, that really, it's really bothering me. I mean, that can't be that hard, but I really couldn't do it. So uh, that was a bit of a bummer. And um, after, at that point, I was looking a lot, I was also joining Twitter. That was like when I first discovered it. And I th saw all these uh, great uh, uh, learning resources on Twitter about, uh, uh, from map time, especially about what a web map is, how it works, what are tiles, what is, uh, what is a, a, a tile renderer, what is a web map, what are data layers, what is GeoJSON, all these things that, you know, are pretty uh, inaccessible usually. 
And uh, I went to the US, met, met Beth and some of the people at Stamen, and they really convinced me to uh, do a ch like open up my own chapter in Berlin. And at the beginning, I was really afraid because I didn't know anything about all these technologies. But I was like, OK, I'll just uh, give it a shot. So I came back to Berlin, and um, the first thing I did was to look for people who actually knew something about it, about this topic. So I wasn't really, wouldn't get lost in all this. So I found Sebastian and uh, some, uh, two other guys here. And uh, we just decided at some point, OK, we're going to uh, have this meetup, uh, a web uh, a page, and we're just going to set a date and see what happens and uh, see if anyone's interested to learn about maps, or if, whether it's just us. Uh, then at least it would be the three of us. That's fine, too. But um, it turned out that actually some, of people, some people came. So here, this is the first session. Uh, we had about 20 people. And uh, yeah, people were really interested. And that's actually on the top. That's me with my hand raised like this and uh, trying talking something about maps, which, of course, at that point, I didn't know what I was talking about. But I think, I think not a lot of people actually realized that. So, uh, or, at least, or maybe they, they were just too polite to, to uh, say it. But uh, they came back, and that was really good. Um, so then we started to kind of grow the community. People, more and more people came. We had a really regular uh, 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 schedule. So every month, like uh, we had a we had a session, and we started to think about what other topics could we do. Not only web mapping, but also maybe uh, you know topics where people would just talk about maps. And this one was, per, uh, for example, uh, one on uh, hand drawn maps and uh, imaginary maps. So how people would actually deal with physical space around where they lived and how they could you know, uh, uh, come up with their own personal mind maps, let's say. And, and that was also really interesting. And, and uh, we had really great discussions about Berlin, specific parts of the city and neighborhoods especially. So that was also different. Then we also invited people from, for example, like this. This is a slide uh, uh, some of the guests from, uh, from Spiegel Online, a, German, a big German uh, newspaper. And they talked about data journalism, because in Germany, maps and digital maps especially go hand in hand a lot with the data journalism community. It's kind of intertwined, I guess. Um, so we also had a lot of people from this area coming. And we also managed to actually go to with a, with a, map, with a group of map timers uh, in Berlin to the, uh, uh, to the vault, to the secret uh, map vault in, in, the, uh, in the library. Uh, so they invited us to go there and see some of the old maps that usually you won't really get access to. But uh, we were lucky because we were Map Time Berlin, and they said, OK, you can come and uh, have a look. So uh, that was also really cool. Um, and yeah, it evolved you know, over time. This is just uh, a bit of a, a, a graph of how, how the, the membership in, on our Meetup page uh, has evolved. And apparently, yeah, people are still interested. People, you know, since the start, have, have actually joined. And uh, uh, yeah, now we're at, I think, 1,400 people in, our, in the Meetup group, and regular 70, 70 to 75 people maybe showing up for every uh, a Meetup. So we, sometimes we even have to kind of uh, uh, limit, <laughs> limit the events because our venue is not as big. Um, but we're, of course, we're really happy that everyone's uh, there and that people are still interested. And, uh, but, you know, with a bigger community, of course, you have a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff happening. And, of course, this means more uh, pain, in a way, for, our, for our, us as organizers. So, of course, you need more space, you know, for example, uh, to put in a, a Christmas tree into the venue, you need that. Um, of course, you need more money to buy, you know, pizza. People want to drink something. Some people only come for the pizza, of course. So that's also cool. Um, and uh, also to run errands and, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, that means money. And also you need more time. Um, and al also you need to keep everyone pleased, right? Because more people come, they're all really different. They come from different communities. And they're like, hey, OK, I want to learn PostGIS. And we're like, ah, but maybe that's not, not a topic for beginners. So um, maybe we start with a web map. Maybe we start with Leaflet. And uh, let's see. So you can't keep everyone happy. Um, so in, in order to deal with these challenges, we kind of just started, OK, let's just experiment a bit. And, and, and we don't know how this works. We've never done this before. Uh, let's just uh, uh, yeah, let's do our best and see what happens. So in terms of the space thing, we were really lucky to find a sponsor, um, which was local uh, in Berlin, and who were really interested to, to host us and uh, have us do the ma meetups there. Um, and a local sponsor for, from our side, I think, is really, really helpful because um, yeah, the, they're usually interested in what you do, and they don't just do it for the marketing. Because some, some, you know, if it's a big corporation from somewhere else, uh, they might actually uh, uh, just do it to, you know, tweet about it. But so if they're really interested uh, for the for the sake of what you do, that's usually better. In terms of the money um, thing, we uh, we found also we found sponsors. We had quite a few different sponsors, and. Uh, what we really found out was really works well is small companies because big companies, as I said before, they tend to use that for marketing, and also it takes a lot longer to get money. So we had a really big uh, geospatial company at the beginning, which name I won't mention now, but uh, 
for, for them it took, it took like five months to get uh, a thousand euros budget for half a year and uh, a lot of paperwork, so that was a bit, uh, a bit too much. So now we have a smaller sponsor, which works way better. And for the time issue, I guess, um, yeah, you need some people to help you out. You can't do it by yourself. You can't really organize uh, a group like that by yourself. You need some people to split up the work and also to uh, take a step back once you feel that it's getting a bit too much. And, um, you know, the thing is, I mean, what you want to do is really uh, you want to keep it, uh, keep it fresh, right? So you want to really, um, usually what happens to a community like this, you have a, uh, at the beginning you're really excited, you have a lot of ideas, and it's like, yeah, really cool, we're going to do this, 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 this. At some point, you reach a point where it's actually, you've done all this, you know, you have a lot of uh, topics covered, you've invited a lot of speakers, and maybe also other things in your life than just organizing a, a group. And at this point, you can either just say, okay, um, well, we'll just keep on, go, go, uh, keep on going and get bored and then just abandon at some point. Or you can say, okay, uh, let's maybe change, change some stuff and get some more people to be on board and maybe take a step back from what you've been doing. And um, in terms of uh, keeping everyone pleased, our solution is really to, to, was really to be aware of the mission. So we really said, okay, we want to have a, a beginner focus, and that's what we want. And also, um, that means that we have to find a good uh, balance of content. So, for example, uh, some people would maybe were interested in learning something technical, but some people who came for the first time from an architecture point of view would not really understand what that means. Um, so then, you know, we try to mix this up with uh, content that would be maybe more artistic, but was still related to mapping. Uh, for, for example, like this is uh, Daniel Velasco Rogers, an artist from Berlin, and he just showed us uh, his way of, of, of mapping his daily, uh, daily surroundings, and that was also really interesting for other people. But I've also, you know, not only had great content, but I've also met great people through MapTime. For example, uh, Michele here, uh, I met him through uh, uh, MapTime because he wrote me at some point a message on Slack that he was in Berlin and that he had just founded MapTime Milano. And, uh, well, he can tell you more about that now. Thank you, Sia. Um, so, yeah, in the second part, I'm going to go through um, the events that happened between 2014 and 2016 when I was uh, running the chapter. <laughs> But uh, my story actually starts a few years before, um, precisely in Milan, in this neighborhood, in exactly in this square. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you just cross the square and, and you go on the other side, you can find this uh, nice marble fountain with some really slick benches where I used to ruin my knees skateboarding when I was a teenager. And incidentally, they also became my first OSM edits a few years later. Uh, and if you skip a few years later again, um, Polytechnico became my home as a student, so it's, it's a pleasure for me to be here with you today. Um, so uh, at that time, I was, I was really into you know, the hard cartographic sciences, like remote sensing and GIS and spatial analysis. And this was pretty much the extent of the cartographic knowledge that I, that I knew. So you can imagine my surprise when I uh, encountered MapTime uh, online with this explosion of colors and, and rainbows. Um, and I was really blown away, um, but more so than the colors by the fact that MapTime is such an inclusive and supportive community. So in the summer of 2014, I uh, attended Phosphogy in Portland, uh, where I met Lizzie and uh, Rafa. And when I came back, I was just super excited to start. Um, this is a picture that uh, I took a year after. Um, it's you know, just stickers from the MapTime headquarters. But again, I think it's, it's a testament to this feeling of support that you get. Like, you're not alone in, in running this. So I was really excited. Uh, it was September, and I decided, yeah, let, let's do it. Back then, I was, uh, I was working at Polytechnic um, as a GIS analyst, uh, a GIS developer. And together with, um, with a lecturer here, actually across the, the, the square this time, in the architecture faculty, we had our first, uh, our first event. It was exciting. I think this silly gift It's again, a testimony to that sense of uh, excitement. Um, but it was also, I was also personally really scared. Um, I remember just before, uh, you know, just before the meetup, you know, trying to derive the Mercator projection mathematically because I, I thought I need to do, uh, you know, I need to understand all the things. It was my duty as an organizer to have everything under control, um, and this feeling really didn't left me. Uh, even when we moved away from Polytechnico to the Open Dot Fab Lab, the other location that hosted us so far. Um, I received an email, uh, I apologize it's in Italian, but it roughly translates to, huh, oh, so you organize a meetup about maps and you, you cannot even put the address correctly, you cannot even put a pin on a map. And I thought, oh man, I'm such a terrible organizer, it's, it's shameful. And by the way, the address was there. So, so this proves my, my first point, which is kind of, you know, 
it's okay to be an amateur. You don't need to be, you know, 100% professional to make things polished all the time when you're doing like something for the community. So it's okay to be an amateur. Anyway, after that first time, we collected some ideas from the community. Um, we let them write some post-its with, you know, their interest. As you might imagine, we got all kinds of answers. People wanted to learn a proprietary GS software, which I'm not going to mention. They also wanted to learn the equivalent open source version. They wanted to learn something really specific, and at the same time, they wanted to learn everything. And I mean, this is really challenging from an organizer perspective because you are confronted with such a wide spectrum of expectations, and you know, it's, it's hard to cope with. So I think a way to go around this is to really listen to your community and to kind of try to understand who, who's in front of you. So to do that, uh, I thought, well, you know, we're in Milan, and this, I put on this slide some items that characterize Milan, like our beautiful Duomo, the Saffron Risotto, the Aperitivo. But uh, there's one item that's missing here. Who can tell me uh, what item characterizes Milan? What makes M Milan famous in the world? Anybody? Exactly. I mean, you might have seen from a fancy outfit, but I mean, it's, it's a bit of a stretch, but it's true that um, Milan hosts the largest uh, creative sector in Italy. So we had lots of people coming you know, from, from design, from architecture. Uh, we also had, again, like data journalists and people working in data visualization. So to kind of cater to their interest and to let the, the community grow, we had some meetups about the three. Um, and some meetups about you know, cultural heritage and, and, and public spaces. And they were really good because um, we got to invite speakers and, and extend our network. Uh, at the same time, they were a bit challenging for, for newbies, for, for beginners, because you know, if you're not part of those sub-communities, it's hard to, to follow these technical um, topics. Eventually, though, I became a bit tired of just you know, adapting content that was provided for me, so basically translating from English to Italian uh, tutorials that I found online, and I wanted to do something of my own. And I thought, hang on, we are in a fab lab. And for those of you who don't know what a fab lab is, it's like a community workshop when you can use digital fabrication technologies like 3D printing and Arduinos and you know, CNC machines. And so we started using that space. This is just a silly example of something that we did. It's an inter interactive 3D map of Italy. Um, but as silly as it is, it was really useful. We presented it at the uh, Italian Open Street Map Gathering in 2016, which allowed us to, to meet other communities, such as Wikipedians, uh, Wikimedia Italy and the Wikipedians, and, and to kind of overlap with them. Um, and, and this goes to my to this other point, which I think is it's fairly important. Map time varies across geography. Um, a chapter in the US is not the same as a chapter in Europe, and Berlin is not Milan, and vice versa. So you really need to relate to your local content, play your angle, and you know, un understand what you, what you have in your local dimension, which in our case was this, this Fab Lab. Um, despite all this effort, uh, things don't always go you know, as smoothly as, as, as you wish. So you can see this is just a snapshot of the attendees number. And you can see that some months we had a few people coming, and then you know, the, month, uh, the following month, Pretty much nobody came, but then the numbers went up again the, the following. And they just keep rocking back and forth. And, and this goes to my last point, which is communities are really hard to understand. They're really delicate. They're so you know, easy to disrupt and fragile. But they're wonderful things. And when they work, they're just amazing. You're like having these spaces to, you know, for mutual exchange, for, for growing together. So just to sum up a few, a few points, um, for me, like a takeaway point would be don't be afraid to jump into something new. Don't be afraid that you, know, you don't, don't know enough. Uh, it's going to be OK eventually, hopefully. And I find that doing something practical uh, really helps. So I strive for, for doing uh, tutorials that were always practical so that you know, uh, an attendee would go home the following day and think, yeah, maybe it was a bit chaotic, not so polished. But you know, I, learned this, I learned this skill, and I can apply it uh, in my job or you know, from now onwards. I think it really helped me. And the, uh, the last two parts is, I mean, for us, it was also always this thing where we were really unsure whether uh, people would be able to understand or whether people would like it. And I think this, uh, having a clear mission really helped us in that sense of, uh, of making sure what we actually wanted to do. 
And also, yeah, take a chance to disappoint. At some point, you know, some th things don't work out. Sometimes we didn't have internet. <laughs> some, some talks were horrible. Uh, some talks were great. But, uh, well, it goes that way, and uh, that's fine. So um, I would encourage you to go out, found your map, map time chapter in the, somewhere in the world. If there's not none, if there's already one, please uh, go and join it and have fun and make maps. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. If someone has some question. Well, before the question, can we just say, make an announcement? Yeah. So if you, know, if you don't have plans tonight, please join us. It's going to be uh, a party with polymappers at Birificio Lambrate, which is the local brewery. It's just two minutes by your feet um, following the railway tracks. So uh, yeah, it's basically there. So you go out in the square to the left and then to the right and follow the tram line. Um, please join us. Yep. Please uh, take pictures and tweet it and uh, whatever. Yeah, print posters. <laughs> uh, thanks. That that was great. Um, I must admit I d hadn't heard of uh, Map Time until um, I saw it in the program, and I wondered if uh, you do it collaborate at all with missing maps groups. Um, we've, in Berlin, we've been in touch with Missing Maps and also with like, Hot OSM and so forth, so the communities are definitely intertwined. Also, the OSM community is part of the MapTime community, if you will, but uh, they're still separate groups, so there, I would say there's overlap, but we're not, like we in Berlin, we haven't done like a specific event together, even though it was planned, but there's been so many things that we've planned and that haven't turned out to, uh, to be realized, but yeah, there's definitely contact. Yeah. And uh, that's actually how I met Pete, Pete Masters. Um, yeah, so we... There's, I would say, yeah, they're not the same community, but there's a lot of overlap. Uh, and running mapathons for missing maps is actually like a really cool map time activity. So. Other question? Okay. Okay, well. Uh, what is the. Have you guys thought of. Uh, getting new leaders into running these meetups in a more sustainable, consistent way, or does the responsibility fall on the same person all the time? Yeah, that, that's a good question, because we have, we've just gone through this process in Berlin, actually, because uh, Sebastian and me were both pretty, uh, uh, yeah, like worked out with other stuff, so more and more stuff kept ha happening in our, pers in our other lives, professional lives, private lives, so we didn't have as much time anymore. So what we did, yeah, we actually, we, we have some more people come up on the organizing team, um, because otherwise, I mean, we also felt at some point that we'd already kind of used all our contacts, so we'd invited all the people that we thought were, were cool and that could do good stuff, and at some point it's really like you're kind of doing repetitive things, and it just it doesn't, it's not as much fun anymore, so yeah, we try to get new people to, to join us, also coming from other areas and not the same bubbles that we were in maybe, so... Uh, yeah, we've done that. We've, we're now bigger, which is also a bit challenging because at the same time, once you're bigger, then you, then you don't have to send emails to three people, but to five or six, then the responses come in, and then you're like, oh, man, all these emails. Uh, so that's also a bit challenging. But uh, yeah, I, I would definitely recommend to have, like, always, you know, keep, keep on to, to getting new people on board because otherwise it will just not be sustainable over the long, in the long run. Yeah. I relocated to London for my studies, so it was like uh, I was forced to. Uh, but it, it was, it's always nice to find new people, anyway, jumping in and yeah, bringing fresh energies and new perspectives on things. Okay, so if there are no other questions, thanks to Michele and to Etsino.